Welcome everybody, welcome to everybody here, and welcome to you joining us on Facebook and YouTube. And welcome to this service today where we reflect on and receive the blessing of endurance. Endurance is about lasting for a long time. In people, it's an ability to stick with a person or a task, even if it is difficult, it is persevering for a purpose. Endurance enables people in sports and business and life to accomplish things that no one thought would be possible. Thomas Edison's invention of an electric light bulb for home use is a classic example. The welcome slide shows a picture of the bulb he patented on January 27, 1880. It looks pretty much like the bulbs that we used until just a few years ago. That's endurance. And it took endurance to come up with this design. He and his associates tested thousands of theories and over 6,000 materials before coming up with a bulb that would not burn out after a few hours or days. He tried so many times that people said he had failed. Edison's response, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways it didn't work. <laughs> it's one of his most famous quotes, but he has many, many sweet ones. One of the blessings of endurance is giving us a different way of seeing what other people might call failure. One of the blessings of endurance is gives us a different way of seeing what other people might call failure. So in the name of Jesus, we gather this day in the blessing of knowing the endurance of God in loving and forgiving us, and the endurance that that gives us in this life to see ourselves not as failures, but as children of God growing in maturity. And so, with that, I invite you to stand and sing, This is the day that the Lord has made. Have you guys 
ever had a friend who was sick or hurt, or or your mom or dad were sick or hurt? Oh, that's lucky. Yeah, sometimes we get sick, sometimes we don't. Sometimes my throat gets so dry. I try drinking water, but it still helps. It helps a little bit, but I still cough. Mm -hmm. So when when you guys are sick, Eli, when you guys are sick or hurt, or if your friend is sick or hurt, or your parent is sick or hurt, uh, what do you guys do? Or what do your parents do for you? Yeah. They help us. They do what? Help us. Yeah, they help. They call the ambulance. Call the ambulance. If you're hurt, yes, you, can. you definitely should call the ambulance if you're hurt. Yeah, so a lot of times if we're sick or we're hurt or something like that, we need help. Right, Wyatt? Wyatt, do you get lots of help from your parents? Stand up. They can stand up. They're pretending they're sick or hurt, and then we can help oh, them. Oh, yes, here we go. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, when we're sick or hurt, we need a lot of help. And the story that we're learning about today is about someone who couldn't walk and he needed a lot of help. And his friends were really, really good friends and they gave him a ton of help. And they believed that Jesus could also give him a ton of help. So they took him to see Jesus because they knew that he would help them. And we get to learn about how Jesus helped him in a way that might have been different than what they expected, and then also helped him. I read that in the comic book. You read that story? Have, have you read that story too? You know that story? Yeah? Should we go and learn about it? I have lots of fun things that we get to do to learn about it. There's a comic book about it. Very cool. They went in as burglars. <laughs> not burglars. We get to learn about it, though. And we get to learn about how God and Jesus are always there to help us. And we can always count on them to help us. Yeah, so you're going to help us a lot with learning about this story, right? My finger off. All right, so let's, let's fold our hands. Eli, can you fold your hands under there? And we're going to pray. Thank you, Lord, for being our biggest helper and our greatest friend that we know that we can always count on. Help us have a really great Sunday school day and learn lots about your story. Amen. tempted to say the excitement has left the building, but I hope not. So. <laughs> so good to have the kids. So good. Um, I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, 
Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, and she was his Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. I invite you to be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Almighty God, 
We pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, so that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite Melissa forward to lead us in the reading of God's Word. Today's first reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for an ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And the gospel reading assigned for today is from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Jesus told his disciples a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect, who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? We sing our next hymn, Come My Soul with Every Care.
Sometimes getting endurance is like watching, watching your ship stuck. The ship that was going to carry you to the place you wanted to get. Crushed. And sink into the depths. So a key part of getting endurance is understanding that Jesus calls us to endurance. You can see that in the Gospel reading. By the way, if you have not caught Jesus' sense of humor in this reading, you're missing getting it. He tells this funny story. And the funny part is really seen in this judge, this powerful judge who gets worn down by this widow coming to him and saying, give me justice, give me justice. This powerful judge, above anything that anybody could do to him, worn down, no endurance. And I love what the judge says. I don't fear God. I don't respect people. But this widow keeps bothering me. I'm going to give her what she wants. She's not going to beat me down by her continuing to come around. It's a hilarious story. You're supposed to laugh when you hear it. This pathetic picture of this judge. Because Jesus' point is, surely God is better than that. <laughs> God is not this pathetic judge that finally just gets worn down by your pounding him with your prayers. That is not at all who he is. Jesus has been showing his disciples that over and over again for how many years at this point in time, we don't know. But he's shown it to them in miracles. He's shown it to the very, very fact that he said to this bunch of outcasts, come, follow me. We will, I will give you the kingdom of God. You know, like they've had seen the love of God incredibly. And so I think they would have got it. But then he finishes the story with this. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? You see, the ability of the Son of Man to find faith on earth when he comes depends on the endurance of these very guys he's talking to. And again and again, and he tells them, you, you, you need endurance for what's going to come. You need endurance for what you're going to see me go through. I'm going to rise from the dead, but... And, and then you're going to need endurance for what they're going to do to you. Hang in there, guys. Hang in there, gals. And do your job. Take to the world, to people of every nation and culture and language, take to every person the good news of the kingdom of God, who is not a weak judge, but it's the powerful creator of the world who has sent me to die on the cross to show his love before you've done anything for him. So a key part of getting endurance, yes, is getting that Jesus calls us to it and promises that it will be rewarded. And Paul then helps us to see in terms of the role that endurance plays in our lives is in terms of the life of a Christian. He lays that out so beautifully. First of all, starting by this, this idea that making it clear, endurance for us who believe isn't about us enduring so that we get saved. It has nothing to do with that. You are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. While you were still a sinner, he died on the cross for you. Your salvation is secure in him. Paul wants to be sure we clearly understand that. And in this, he has shown his crazy, crazy love for us because he did all this while we were still sinners. So like Paul says, remember, let's keep that clear. But now understanding that, let's understand how endurance works in the life of a believer. It works this way. We go through suffering in this world. We go through trials in this world. We go through times in this world where we do not see the goodness of God. We can go through times in this world when we've done everything we could possibly think of for God and we've done a lot of amazing things for God and, and still we don't see any sign of God answering our prayers and we see everything, well, 
doing that, falling apart. We feel like the masts of that ship, crushed. We're going through suffering as a believer, Paul says. Going through suffering as a believer, continuing holding on, enduring in our faith in Christ, and produces a kind of deeper endurance in us that produces a character for us, that molds us into being, maturing as children of God deepening in our faith in God's grace that even though we believe it, we don't see it, but it deepening us in our faith in that and the promise of the goodness to come and the promise of God's love for all people. And it deepens us in it too because it helps us understand and appreciate and identify with those that do not believe that are going through suffering so that we don't go through life all everything nice for us and look at others and say, well, too bad for you. I've got faith, so everything's good in my life. No, no, suffering equals the playing field so that we all go through this life just as one human being as another human being. So it develops a character in us where we have compassion, empathy, and really have now a place where as a brother or sister to a brother or sister in humanity, we might actually be able to follow the Spirit's guiding when it prompts us, ask them that. Share with them the reason for the faith that is in you, because they've asked you now. They want to know how you do what you do. So tell them. Endurance in the life of a believer is not about getting to heaven. It's about growing and becoming the person that God has made us to be. It's about growing in receiving the abundant life that Jesus gives here and now. We can get endurance from seeing it in other people. Anybody recognize that picture? Shackleton. It's Shackleton. Very good. Well, let me tell you about that a little bit. That ship set sail on August 6, 1914. Its captain was William Shackleton? My brain's going blank now. It was Shackleton. <laughs> he had a crew of 27 with him. And their goal was to make the first crossing of the Antarctic continent. Five months later, they were trapped in the ice. Eight months after that, the masts were crushed and they had to abandon ship. Picture was taken at some point in time around then. Can you imagine that? Eight months, they're stuck. At one point, they were trying to drag the ship. Eight months, they are just stuck in this life ice, and it's closing in around them, and finally, it just crushes everything, and they finally have to leave the ship as their shelter. They managed to salvage three lifeboats, which they drag across the ice. One month later, that sinks. November 21st. 1915. Six months later, uh, this is, it's a crazy, arduous journey. It's, talk about endurance. It takes more and more endurance. Every step, every paddle across the icy ocean, every up against gale force wind and, and wave to finally get to a whaling station. Three of them walk in, Shackleton and two others, looking like only God knows what. When asked who it is, says Captain Shackleton. And the Norwegian whaler that records the conversation at that point then says, I turned aside and wept. <coughs> It would take another three months before they would get to back to where the remaining 25 crew members were and save them. Not one crew member died in this. After a total of 24 months and 22 days from setting sail from England. And then, on March 9th, 2022, who knows what happened? Next slide.
After years and years and years of searching, a team of scientists were able to send down a camera and they found the endurance on the bottom of the Weddell Sea. That's the stern of the ship. Turns out the endurance had endurance. But I would say nothing like the crew. And let's be clear, they're just like you and me. One of the ways we get endurance is recognizing the human capacity for endurance is in us all, and it's an incredible capacity for endurance. So we can get endurance from seeing the endurance in other people. Incredible story like this. The writer of Hebrews points us, out, points us to all the saints from the past in terms of how we can get endurance from them. The saints of the past that he says, they never got what they were promised, but they endured in faith. And then he says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. In other words, Jesus is the one that gives us faith, and he's the one that maintains us in faith, and he's the one that grows us in faith. Just remaining in him in the vine, as we talked about last time. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. He's just getting to it, folks. Listen to this. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. The ultimate place we get endurance from is from Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and everything that he endured, that we might know we are loved, that we might know that God is God, creating, loving, and that God desires nothing but good for every human being, and that has brought us to faith and promises everlasting life, simply receiving his son he sent. Knowing the endurance that God desires for us and that Jesus calls us to endurance, we pray for the blessing of endurance with a prayer that Paul tells the Colossians, he said, for them. I've slightly modified it, so we can go to the prayer now. And I invite you to say this prayer with me. So I'm just going to stand down here. I invite you to stand. Let us pray. Thank you, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for our faith in Christ Jesus and the love you give for all the saints and the hope of everlasting life. For you have qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light, having delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of your beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Fill us, we pray, with the knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that we walk in a manner worthy of Jesus, our Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in knowledge of you, being strengthened with all power according to your glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy and thankfulness. Amen. I'm actually just going to get you to stand while we're doing this, so you can keep standing while I talk. <laughs> I want to give a little introduction to this hymn. Um, for me, it really fits in with what Craig was saying. When I, I still remember being a little girl, maybe I was grade two, grade three, and I had every verse of this hymn him memorized, and I remember standing and just singing. Oh, yeah, I was a little girl, and just happy little girl, live for Jesus. And and so this was, um, yeah, this is a very powerful hymn. And as I was getting ready for the service today, I realized I don't have the verses memorized anymore. <laughs> you know, like what happens? Like life happens, and like where's that childlike faith that 
Um, anyway, so yeah, for me, this is a hymn that should be on your bedside table, and you wake up every morning and you read it, and you read it before you go to bed. It has such a pretty melody, and I think sometimes we're enjoying singing it and whatever that we don't really pay attention to the words, so focus on the, on the words. They're powerful words. They're such a statement of faith. begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Goodbye. Uta to come forward to lead us in prayer. Good afternoon. Please pray with me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege of coming to you in prayer. Thank you for inviting us into this wonderful relationship with you with the ability to commune with you in this way. 
Thank you for hearing, receiving, and answering our prayer. Thank you also for the invitation to come to the communion table, to take of the bread and the wine as your son instituted as he shared the Last Supper with his disciples. Thank you for the life, death, and resurrection of your son, our Lord. How much you love us. Forgive us of our sins and help us to walk anew. Thank you for making this possible in Jesus' name. Thank you for these beautiful fall days. We rejoice in the beauty of your creation and are so thankful for the abundance of harvest that we are able to enjoy the benefits of. Help us to be good stewards of the land and all that you have provided us with thanksgiving and to your glory. Thank you, Lord, for the church community here at St. of St. John's. Thank you for those in leadership who give so much of themselves in care and consideration for this con congregation. Tomorrow as we gather for the voters meet meeting, we pray for your guidance in the discussion and decisions that need to be made. Thank you also for those who creatively find ways to bring our St. John's family together and to reach out in love to our surrounding community. We pray for your blessing on our Oktoberfest meal and for the trunk and treat event later this month. May we be known for the love and the joy that we share that emanates from our relationship with you. In light of the municipal elections yesterday, we are thankful for each person that put their name forward to serve their communities. For those who are elected, we pray that their hearts would be open to your guidance. We pray for wisdom and unity as they work together to make decisions on the very complex issues that affect our communities. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedoms we have in this country. We thank you that we have freedom and opportunity to come together to worship and learn of you and to encourage one another in our faith walk. We thank you for the freedom to speak and to vote without fear of violent intimidation. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we know we are so privileged in our country. And we pray right now for those living under oppressive re regimes yeah. in countries and in countries where war is raging. We pray particularly right now for Christians who often face severe persecution and pressure and even death for living their faith. Strengthen them in their faith through their circumstances. We pray for protection and provision. We pray for those suffering the effects of war and conflict in their countries, which often bring hunger and disease, like in Haiti and Yemen and Myanmar, elsewhere. We pray for the peace that only you can bring. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> we pray your blessing on those who rise up and refuse to let evil overcome their hearts, but meet it with beauty and song and hands open in kindness. We pray for courage and wisdom and provision for those who are compelled by your love to open up their homes and hearts and hands to those who are vulnerable and hurting. Lord, you told us that these things would come to pass in the last days. And as violence and difficulties increase, and as each one of us goes through our own personal trials, help each one of us to keep our eyes fixed on you so that we may endure. We pray as Paul did. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace comfort our hearts and establish us in every good word and work. Now let's each of us take some time to quietly pray for things that are close to our own hearts. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we go with the blessing of endurance. Blessing of knowing the promise of it. Promise is seen in the story of the Australia too there. Story of the endurance of a great team. John Bertrand was the captain of Australia too. And after 132 years of American sailing dominance, the longest unbeaten streak in sport, The crew of Australia too, under the captainship of John Bertrand, well, it didn't happen that easily, it went down. Three races to Dennis O'Connor and Liberty, one for them. Liberty just had to win one more. Everybody thought it was over. They fought back, so it came down to the seventh race. John Bertrand called upon everything he had in terms of the crazy, crazy, crazy training he had taken that crew through for a year and a half. They had to endure the training. It took endurance to get through the training. And his goal in the training was to bring them together as such a team that it would be unthinkable to any member of the team not to give absolutely everything they could to winning this race. On the fifth leg of seven legs of that race, Australia 2 was behind by 57 seconds. That is a crazy, crazy deficit. Especially one to make up against a world-class opponent who had won the America's Cup two times previously. John Bertrand says, the only tactic I can employ is, at that point in time, Keep hanging in there. In other words, endure. Do whatever we have been trained to do. Don't give up, don't panic, and don't do anything rash. In the end, the crew of Australia too outsailed the Americans and they won the race and the cup by 41 seconds. And ended a 132 year winning streak of the New York Yacht Club. Nobody thought it could be done. Bertrand had, lo had lost three, four other times in trying to challenge for the America's Cup. Since then, it's been actually taken more times by, uh, by New Zealand than anybody else, interestingly enough, and hope it gets you interested. You can read a little bit more about the America's Cup. It's a fascinating thing. But I, what I want you to really see on that picture is look at the team. Are they excited? I wish I wanted to get a picture where they had the boxing kangaroo up. They did ultimately pull that up and uh, it's a great, there's some great, great pictures. But I love that picture of the team. We go with the blessing of endurance and understanding that the blessing of endurance that we have is to be part of a team that has the greatest leader that the world has ever seen, the greatest teacher, the savior who rose from the dead and has brought together and is bringing together and will bring together the people of God who trust in him and receive what he offers, the spirit of God that is poured out in his bloodshed for the forgiveness of all sin, and receive this and bring us to the place of being the most incredible group and celebrating in unending, everlasting praise around the throne of God and of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And some of the promises of what that comes from, in that endurance as believers in faith. We heard over the summer series with each letter, at the end of the letters of Revelation, every single one ends with a promise. To the one who endures, Jesus says. And Tons of promises are unpacked there, but the greatest promise of all is being part of this community, 
celebrating with bigger hearts, celebrating with greater joy, in an unending celebration of the joy and the love and the peace of God that every single person on that team, every believer shares forever. And so we go with the blessing of knowing this is the promise of endurance and knowing that Jesus desires everybody we meet join us in this team and be part of this great, incredible, unending celebration of joy. And so go with the blessing of endurance with hearts large in the love of God for you and for all people with a joy that you can have in the grace of God that can be yours even in the midst of deep sorrow and a faith in the promises of God that will be for sure because the steadfast love of, the, of God endures forever as the psalmist said over and over and over again in the Old Testament and as Jesus proved with his resurrection from the dead. So go in the promise of the blessing of endurance that is yours, that God desires for every person. In the blessing of knowing the endurance of the steadfast love of God in Christ. And the blessing of endurance this gives us in the power of the Holy Spirit working in us, giving us new and everlasting life in the steadfast love of God that endures forever. So in the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Just gonna switch places here. <laughs> um, not forever. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I, I, I couldn't resist that. that was like... <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty good. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. Oh, I just thought that we just have to end uh, this song singing about how God's uh, the one thing remains, God's love never fails. How about if you all stand?
بریسید